Good morning, all. It's good to see you today. I am uh, using the camera and the microphone that is on my computer because um, my iPad, which I've used, seems to have that focusing problem. It goes in and out of focus, and it's a little bit distracting, I guess, to. Uh, you folks who are watching. So I am uh, popping up my <clears throat> Facebook page so I can see who's with us today. There's already 13 people with us. See if I can see the comments. Judy Martin, good morning. And Scott Johnson, good morning. Kip Horvath is with us. Good morning. And Judy Hatch, good morning. Jeannie Mathis, good morning. Linda Clark, good morning. And Kevin Vaughn is with us. Good morning. Still saying prayers for Chris, Kevin. Larry and Carolyn Thomas, always with us. Good morning and good to see you today. Sandy Sauerbeck, good morning. Linda Wolf, good morning. Janet Lyons, good morning. Always and another. Another constant companion here in the mornings. Good to see you. And John Clark, good morning to you. Jeannie says that it is a glorious Tuesday. It is here in uh, Allen Park. And it has cooled down a little bit more. It's even going to go a little bit better, I think, as we move forward. And uh, tomorrow is supposed to be beautiful. Don Jones, good morning. And Paul Wolf is with us. Good to see you. No, I don't really want that one. Of course, I don't know how to was. Oh, there it is. Ignore it. There it is. Oh, thank you. All right. Doug Goddard is with us. Good morning. And Tracy Crutz. Good to see you all. 18 people with us. Carrie just joined us. Hello, Carrie. And Ann Winslow is with us. Good morning, Ann. I am, uh, as I said before, to uh, the people that were just coming here, it's a little bit of a different angle to see me from uh, because I'm using the computer in my uh, in my laptop. And the reason for that is because my iPad seems to have some kind of focal problem. It goes in and out of focus, and that can be disconcerting if you're if you're just trying to soak in the word and watch it at the same time. So you get a little bit of a closer uh, aspect ratio to me today. So anyway, you know, good to be here with you. And it is a glorious day, as we said before. It's a day that the Lord has made and we're told to rejoice and be glad in it. Although we still have a significant number of things that are heavy on our hearts and hopes that we're, uh, that we're praying about, uh, health for people um, and peace for people. Uh, we continue to hold the Keys family and Joan Riggs uh, and her husband, all of them in um, in prayer over Sherry's. Um, she's going to recover, but we just uh, needs she needs time, and uh, we, that's what we do, we're praying for right now. And uh, of course, Anne, we're praying for you and Rudy too. Ken Woods is with us. All right. I'm just looking to see what's going on here. We're 23 people. Um, I will, uh, before we get going, I'll just say that I was just out in the sanctuary and um, we couldn't, we couldn't have, um, um, we couldn't have service there right now. That tech team is working so hard on it. And um, so there's a lift truck in there and there is um, things that are all around, um, but those things are necessary. Uh, for get moving forward here. Amy Bowerman is with us. So lots of equipment that's coming in, um, being installed or looking to see how we can install it. And uh, there's, uh, it's start, but it's starting to come together. And so I am sure that in 
before too long that it will be there. And Susan McCausland is with us. Susan, we're praying for you that your healing is going well. You had uh, you had a, a, an incident with your leg, and so we're hoping that that's going well for you. So um, we will um, um, we're putting up some pictures of the work that's going on in the in the sanctuary. But as I said, right now, if we tried to have if we tried to have uh, service, we couldn't do it. Uh, it was just uh, um, we're in the process of upgrading the speakers, so you, there is no speaker system in there right now. That's kind of uh, down and spread out all over the place. Those great, those two great big uh, gray uh, covers that are up at the front of the sanctuary have been removed, and the speakers behind them have been inspected. And those that we have to replace are are here. So those things are going to be going in this week. All of the equipment for the switching and the soundboards and things like that is in. Uh, it's being it's being uh, programmed so that um, we'll be able to bring in all of those things. It's a wonderful project, and I think that uh, that uh, you'll see it not only with the ability of us to uh, broadcast our worship services live, but when we can be together and have people hear the sound that you'll experience within the sanctuary will be much better too. So we look forward to that. All right. So our um, Let's move on to our our devotions today. It is the July 28th. We're getting to the end of July, and the heat has broken a little bit. For that, we're grateful. I think it's supposed to stay nice in the next several days. So our for, we have two morning psalms, as we always do. And so as we get ready here, let's just take a moment. And just uh, as we always do, let's just take a moment. And whatever is on our mind right now that is uh, preventing us from hearing God's word purely and holy. Let's just take a deep breath in and blow that out and then pray for the Holy Spirit, that the Holy Spirit will accompany us through our, our uh, journey through the Bible as we walk and uh, talk and uh, we see what God has in store for us today. So our first morning Psalm is Psalm 54. Save me, O God, by your name and vindicate me by your might. Hear my prayer, O God, give ear to the words of my mouth. For the insolent have risen against me, the ruthless seek my life. They do not set God before them, Selah. But surely God is my helper. The Lord is the upholder of my life. He will repay my enemies for their evil and your faithfulness put an end to them. With a free will offering, I will sacrifice to you. I will give thanks to your name, O Lord, for it is good. For he has delivered me from every trouble, and my eye has looked in triumph on my enemies. It's the word of the Lord. All thanks be to God. This is a wonderful psalm. It's a psalm that um, recognizes that uh, we have everyday problems, and we have people who uh, are not... Uh, the same mind and are, are pure, uh, pure of heart that um, that take advantage of us, that push us down, that prevent us from doing the right things sometimes, and that um, through our relationship with God and being faithful to God, that at the end, that uh, God's ways will prevail, and so will we. Our second morning psalm is uh, Psalm 146. Let's listen now for the word of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God all my life long. Do not put your trust in princes and mortals in whom there is no help. When their breath departs, they return to the earth. On that very day, their plans perish. Happy are those whose help is in the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord their God, who made heaven and earth the sea and all that is in them, who keeps faith forever, who executes justice for the oppressed, who gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets the prisoners free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up all those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the strangers. He upholds the orphan and the widow, but the way of the wicked he brings to ruin. The Lord will reign forever. Your God, O Zion, for all generations, praise the Lord. 
thanks be to God. So we were have been um, in our Old Testament lessons that we've been reading. We've been in the book of uh, Joshua, and we did finish that up yesterday. We heard about um, the death of Joshua and uh, the continuation of the nation of Israel under the elders, uh, and time has moved on. So we're moving into Judges, the book of Judges, and we're going to read from the second chapter, verses 1 through 5 and 11 through 23. These are what we call the historical books of the Bible because they talk about the, the history of the nation of uh, Israel. And um, the uh, judges were the people, there were no kings yet, but there were judges, uh, wise people who were appointed to rule over the people and make decisions uh, when there was, when there was uh, disagreements that they would judge those things. So um, we're going to read from this and listen now for the word of the Lord. Now the angel of the Lord went up from Gilgal to Borchim and said, I brought you up from Egypt and brought you into the land that I had promised to your ancestors. I said, I will never break my covenant with you. For your part, do not make a covenant with the inhabitants of this land. Tear down their altars. But you have not obeyed my command. See what you have done? So now I say, I will not drive them out before you, but they shall become adversaries to you, and their gods shall be a snare to you. When the angel of the Lord spoke these words to all the Israelites, the people lifted up their voices and wept. So they named that place Bochum, and there they sacrificed to the Lord. Then the Israelites did what was evil in the sight of the Lord and worshipped the Baals. And they abandoned the Lord, the God of their ancestors, who had brought them out of the land of Egypt. They followed other gods from among the gods of the people who were all around them and bowed down to them, and they provoked the Lord to anger. They abandoned the Lord and worshipped Baal and the Asherites. So the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel, and he gave them over to plunderers who plundered them. And he sold them into the power of their enemies all around so that they could no longer withstand their enemies. Whenever they marched out, the hand of the Lord was against them to bring misfortunes, as the Lord had warned them and sworn to them. And they were in great distress. Then the Lord raised up judges who delivered them out of the power of those who plundered them. Yet they did not listen even to their judges, for they just lusted after other gods and bowed down to them. They soon turned aside from the way in which their ancestors had walked, who had obeyed the command of the Lord. They did not follow their example. Whenever the Lord raised up judges for them, the Lord... I have Siri helping me out here. <laughs> I apologize about that. We'll start again here. Whenever the Lord raised up judges for them, the Lord, uh, I'm sorry, yet they did not, uh, let me find out where I am. Whenever they marched out, the hand of the Lord was against them to bring misfortune as the Lord had warned them and sworn to them, and they were in great distress. Then the Lord raised up judges who delivered them out of the power of those who had plundered them, yet they did not listen even to their judges, for they lusted after other gods and bowed down to them. They soon turned aside from the way in which their ancestors had walked, who had obeyed the commands of the Lord. They did not follow their example. Whenever the Lord raised up judges for them, the Lord was with the judge, and he delivered them from the hands of their enemies all the days of the judge, for the Lord would be moved to pity by their groaning because of those who had persecuted and oppressed them. But whenever the judge died, they would relapse and behave worse than their ancestors, following other gods, worshiping them and bowing down to them. They would not drop any of their practices or their stubborn ways. So the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel, and he said, Because the people have transgressed my covenant, that I commanded their ancestors and have not obeyed my voice, I will no longer drive out before them any of the nations that Joshua left when he died, in order to test Israel whether or not they could uh, they would take care to walk in the way of the Lord as their ancestors did. The Lord had left those nations, not driving them out once, and had not handed them over to Joshua. This is the word of the Lord. All thanks be to God. 
so this is um, this is an interesting uh, um, interesting thing that develops here, and uh, we saw that um, it was coming because in Joshua we saw that Joshua had uh, pulled the people together on a consistent basis and had gone over this, had uh, created markers, uh, touchstones, so that people would remember the commandments. Um, but then we have to remember that God created us and God created us with a lot of capacity to love, but also because he is just and fair, the capacity to go otherwise. And perhaps we have this um, natural tendency because when we don't see something or can touch something or have something right in front of us, we tend to grasp those things which are in front of us. And um, this is what happened with the nation of Israel. God didn't drive out all the people uh, that were inhabiting the land when, when the Israelites got there. That, and he left them there as a lesson. And the reason was is that he knew that uh, people had that opportunity that they might turn away from God. And that, and that turning away from God was just becoming more like the people that were already there, worshiping the false gods that they did. So we hear about this, and now judges uh, stepped in. We don't have kings yet. Kings are coming. Um, and uh, that's really an interesting story about why there are kings. Um, and we're going to cover that a little bit on Wednesday night in our Bible study. So uh, look for that email, that constant contact email. That'll give you all the directions on how you can participate in that. But that'll be at 7 p.m. on Wednesday. And we're going to look at, uh, we're gonna look at King David, uh, his life, uh, and uh, what it has to say about him in the Bible. Before we get into David, we need to really take a look at why were there kings. Um, and uh, So that'll be very interesting. That'll be the, the subjects that we'll talk about on Wednesday. All right, we'll move on to the New Testament reading, which is, again, we're, we're, we're in Romans still, um, but we're getting there. So it's Romans chapter 16, verses 17 through 27. Now, yesterday we read about Paul introducing all of his fellow uh, Christians who were ministers with him, uh, who were partners in the gospel, <clears throat> and introducing them to the Romans, saying you're going to see these people. And uh, when you do, welcome them with open arms. So he continues on here. I urge you, brothers and sisters, to keep an eye on those who cause dissension and offenses in opposition to the teaching that you have learned. Avoid them. For such people do not serve our Lord Christ, but their own appetites, and by smooth talk and flattery, they deceive the hearts of the single-minded, simple-minded, I'm sorry. For while your obedience is known to all, so that I rejoice over you, I want you to be wise in what is good and guileless in what is evil. The God of peace will shortly crush Satan under your feet. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Timothy, my worker, greets you. So do Lucius and Jason and Sosipar, my relatives. I, Deterius, the writer of this letter, greet you in the Lord. Gaius, who is host to me and to the whole church, greets you. Erastus, the city treasurer, and our brother Quartus greet you. Now to God, who is to strengthen you according to my gospel and the proclamation of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery that was kept secret for long ago, for long ages, but is now disclosed, and through the prophetic writing is made known to all the Gentiles according to the command of the eternal God, to bring about the obedience of faith to the only wise God through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever. Amen. So here we have the close of the letter, and uh, we're finding we hear um, this. This he's exhorting him them to not be careful of when people come. And they might speak with uh, smooth tongues and uh, even speak in the ways of the gospel, but they're not, they're not looking for that. So um, you might hear that in the background. There's somebody at the door, but I'm going to continue on here. So we also find out that uh, Paul dictated this letter because uh, we have Tertullus, the writer of the letter, greet you in the Lord. So everybody is adding their as they're, as they're putting their salutations in here. So, um, and uh, I see somebody's out there and I'll try to take care of them in just a second. Our gospel reading is Matthew 
It's chapter 27, verses 32 through 44. As uh, This is the events of uh, Easter. As they went out, they came upon a man from Cyrene called Simon. They compelled this man to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means the place of a skull, they offered him wine to drink, mixed it with gall, but when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And when they had crucified him, they divided his clothes among themselves by casting lots. Then they sat down there and kept watch over him. Over his head they put the charge against him, which reads, This is Jesus, King of the Jews. Then two bandits were crucified with, with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, You who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests also, along with the scribes and elders, were mocking him, saying, he saved others. He cannot save himself. He is the king of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God deliver him now, if he wants to. For he said, I am God's son. The bandits who were crucified with him also taunted him in the same way. The word of the Lord. All thanks be to God. I'm going to jump back over here to Facebook and see where we are. All right, I see Robin is with us. Patty Johnson is with us. Good morning. Nancy Hartwell. Joan Riggs is with us. Good morning, Joan. All right. I think that's it. All right, so tough lessons today. Tough lessons that uh, we, we read about here, and the lessons um, are all about not believing in times of difficulty or not believing when there seems to be simpler solutions. Um, but the lesson is that we have to keep our faith in God in all things, and that God will always prevail. So friends, uh, why don't we have a word of prayer before we go today? Heavenly God, we pray to you through your son, Jesus Christ, who sits at your right hand and who prays with us and for us. And we also pray to you in the power of the Holy Spirit, who you yourself dispatch so that we might not ever be alone. But Lord, we oftentimes, just when we can't see, we can't touch, our faith begins to falter. So let us know that even though you are the God of both the visible and the invisible, at this time and in in at, at this time and space, we need to believe. And so we ask as... Uh, we lift our pleas for the people that are in need of healing. We know that people, there's people that are hurting, going through difficult times. We ask that you continue to make your presence known to them and to all of us. And Lord, uh, be with us as we continue through this day that you made. And let us see the good in it. And then let us be willing to take a stand against the evil that's present. And Lord, we know that uh, this is impossible for us to do on our own. But we can do it with the Holy Spirit. We can do it when we support each other as brothers and sisters in Christ. Lord, uh, whatever we might do, let us make sure that it is your will that we, that, we, that we are after, that we want to see, that we want to see the kingdom of her, uh, heaven manifest right here on earth. We ask this in your name. Amen. Amen, all. So I'm sorry for the distractions. I had a phone call come in and I've got somebody at the door. So I'm going to go see what's going on there. God bless you all. I love you all. And uh, we'll see you tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. And remember, uh, keep an eye out uh, for, the, um, for the, the Bible study. That's Wednesday night at 7 p.m. And uh, we're going to push that to Facebook Live. So if you prefer not to participate in the Zoom call, we should be able to push that forward right there. So God bless you all. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.